Hey guys, Ivan here, so it's only been a week since the Mr. Olympia and we already got an awesome show at our hands and as you can see this is Romania Pro and the question here is really can Samson Daura lose this show and let's put it this way can he lose his number 3 spot in the world? Now, as you can see, we have Samson Daura and Behru Stabani, and they were in the center the entire time. I haven't watched the live stream, this is what I hear from people who were there, I don't even know if there was a live stream, but that's what they say, Behru Stabani and Samson Daura are definitely the top two. We're gonna take a look at the other poses and see what this comparison actually looks like, but it's also very, very interesting that Horse MD, at his pro debut, Marcelo D'Angelis, is most likely making that top four maybe even top three guys maybe even top three but i wouldn't bet on it i would rather say nathan diasha is gonna be third here and we have andrea presti who might challenge horse md but i don't know about that now let's focus on what we got right here from double bicep first let's take a look at the top two samson dauda versus becker Stabani, and i think it's pretty clear that samson takes a win in this one I think it's pretty safe to say that Samson is winning this show, yeah, I mean from behind it's not very clear who is winning, but from the front and just overall I think Samson is taking this one home. Now as you can see right here, I mean the question was whether Samson is gonna improve his conditioning for this show compared to the Mr. Olympia. And I think it's pretty clear that Samson is definitely sharper here than he was at the Mr. Olympia. I know the lighting is different, but I think it's pretty obvious, especially in the quads. I don't think Samson had this kind of details in the quads. So I would say he actually spilled over for the Mr. Olympia. Now you guys probably watched my video where I said, where I talked about Samson's peak week, actually what Milos said about that. And basically they weren't really doing anything crazy, but they were carving up for three days. Not with a lot of carbs, but for three days. And this time around, they did only one day of carving up. And look at the difference. Look at the hamstrings, look at the lower back, and the glutes as well. There are cuts now, there are details. There is separation that wasn't there, that obviously wasn't there at the Mr. Olympia. This is definitely a much better look. Look at the lats, the separation in the lats. So I think Samson could have been much sharper than Mr. Olympia... Would the result be different if he showed up like this? I don't think so. I don't think it's that much of a difference. In order for him to beat Hari and Derek, he needs to be more conditioned than this. Much sharper. But yeah, this is definitely an improved package. So Samson talked about how uh, as he's getting older, as he's getting bigger and more advanced, he needs less carbs. I guess it has something to do with his insulin sensitivity. I have no idea. But it happens sometimes, it's very confusing, but some big bodybuilders really don't need a lot of carbs, don't need many days of carving up to be full, to be, to peak, right? So what Samson explained in his stories yesterday is that when they were carving up for the Mr. Olympia, after one day of carving up, he was already full, but he was dry and he was really nice and round and that was when he peaked. And after two more days of carving up, he spilled over a little. So that's what they changed for this show. They only carved him up for one day and the result was perfect. Like I said, in order for him to beat the top guys, Hadi and Derek, he needs to be on a higher level of conditioning. He needs to be uh, as conditioned as Bechru Stabani. Yes, Samson is beating him in this show. Samson is winning this show. I think that's pretty clear. But it's mainly because of overall muscularity, because he's just a bigger bodybuilder. And I'm sure the name, you know, number three in the world, is gonna help a little. But still, I think he's definitely a better bodybuilder here. However, you can see that the Bacharus came in sharper. So Samson can beat like almost everybody in the world today except for two guys who are matching him with size, I mean for their frames, and they also have superior conditioning. So it's not about peaking, it's not about dehydrating, it's about getting leaner. But as you can see right here, I mean, Samson is pretty lean, he's pretty dry, he's pretty conditioned, like even though Beckers is sharper, Samson is just good right here. He's really good. It, like you can't really find any any bad areas. I mean, even his glutes are looking very good. So definitely an improved version from Mr. Olympia. But now let's talk about Becker Stabani, who brought in insane level of conditioning. What a shame that this wasn't at the Mr. Olympia. He would have been top eight for sure. 
for sure. I mean, look at his freaking conditioning. Man, this is crazy. These Iranians, they have some kind of crazy genetics, crazy uh, look to their, basically to their muscle, to the skin. I don't know what it is, but it's something they have, it's genetic for sure. I've been to IFBB World Championships multiple times and it's always Iranians who are dominating the bodybuilding categories. They're also very good in classic physique as well. And they're slowly climbing up. I mean, uh, Hadi already won the Mr. Olympia. He was the best bodybuilder in the world last year, arguably even this year. And now you have Bekrus Tabani who is coming up and he is coming strong. I mean, look at this conditioning, look at this maturity, look at the details. Look at that skin structure, it's crazy, it's amazing, and I'm not taking anything away from his hard work, but genetics definitely do play a big role right here, because this is not obtainable, not everybody can have this kind of detail, this kind of fibers everywhere, uh, Samson can never bring something like this, let's be honest, so if Becherus adds the muscle, if he gets as big as Samson, He's gonna be destroying him, but I don't know if he can do that. I don't know if he has genetics for that. I mean, Samson has crazy genetics for that crazy roundness and size. So right now at this show, we know what we can see, and we can see that Samson is winning this one. Now back to the front double, let's take a look at the other three guys, and I think Nathan definitely brought it, like 100%. I don't think he could have done anything more than this. He's big, he's full, he's hard, he's very conditioned, this is Nathan at his 100%, and like this, he can maybe challenge Bekrus for that second, I can see that, but winning the show, beating Samson, no. Can Marcelo D'Angelis, Horse MD, beat 11-time pro show winner Nathan Diasha? Can that happen in this show? It would be really interesting if it happened, but... I don't think so, I mean, as you can see, this guy has really big legs, really good uh, outer sweeps, and also V-Taper looks pretty good, I was, I thought he had a little bit more narrow waist, but it's still a pretty good V-Taper, I would like to see more lat pop, but overall he does look very good, he might be challenging Nathan, I don't know. Or will he lose against Andrea Presti? Well, if he beats Andrea Presti, that puts him in uh, 11th, 12th in the world, actually, because Andrea was, I think, 12th at the Mr. Olympia. So, as you can see, Andrea Presti has really crazy width, and just he's overall a big guy, but his legs are pretty flat, pretty small. So, because of that, I can see Marcelo D'Angelis beating him. And here is why I don't really see Horse MD placing a third because of the back. His back is not really that good. Nathan is definitely better in the back department, but he might be beating uh, Andrea Presti because of the lower body. And as you can see, Marcel D'Angelo is broad conditioning in the, in the glutes and the hamstrings, so he's overall in great shape and he has big legs, but even for this show is an amazing success for him because this is, however, once again, his pro debut and he has third best bodybuilder in the world and also two of the top eight best bodybuilders in the world, Nathan and Bechrus, and also there is the 12th best bodybuilder in the world, Andrea Presti, so this is a huge show for his pro debut, I don't know if he expected this when he decided to do this show, but it is what it is, he's battling against the very best in the world, and he's holding his own. In the rear lad spread, Horse MD actually looks surprisingly good, he looks like he's beating both Nathan and Andrea Presti, so maybe he wasn't even fully flexed, he wasn't in the pose when they took that shot in the back double, because in the back lat spread, he actually looks really freaking good, so I don't know, I don't know, it's very interesting, you guys tell me, who do you think is gonna place where, if I had to guess, I would say Samson, Bechrus, Nathan, Horse MD, and then Andrea Presti, but I don't know, prejudging is now, I think the finals are tonight, soon in a couple of hours you will, know, you will know the results, but you guys tell me what do you think right now. Oh, and yeah, in the meantime, I think Wesley Visters is easily taking the win at Romania Pro in Classic Physique, and last night Urs Kaletsinski won Texas State, which was a rather easy win for him. And that's gonna do it for this video guys, tell me down below in the comment section what do you think, if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.